So my TikTok blew up a little bit this weekend. I wouldn't say blew up. I didn't go viral or anything. It's just that my numbers did a little better than normal. You know, I posted this new video about how Sabretooth is like the king of black Air Force One energy. We all know that's Kid Boo, but stay with me. <laughs> and that video actually did pretty well. It did pretty well. It, it did pretty well very quickly within time it was posted. I said all that to say that I now understand how people can get very addicted to the likes and the follows and seeing these numbers run up on social media from something that you did or you created. I see now how people can become addicted to wanting to be famous. Not that I didn't understand it before. It's just that now I have a new perspective on it. I'm not going to be that person. I can't. I mean, I just, I, I, I can't. Just the way it feels is great. Don't get me wrong. But chasing likes all the time, it just sounds exhausting. It just sounds like a miserable existence, and it's one that I won't ever do. When it happens, it feels great, but chasing it, nah, never that. I'm just going to keep giving y'all dope content that y'all love. And if you don't like it, then you don't like it. And I'm fine with that. At the end of the day, I would do DYSG for free. Hell, I, I'm, I'm practically doing it for free anyway. But, you know, when this damn thing gets monetized out, out the high hell, when it's, when it's bringing in mad paper, the passion for it, the love for it is still going to be there. Because I love this nerd shit. I love it. And I love y'all. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, blurds and nerds, freaks and geeks, this is Do You Speak Geek? D-Y-S-G. Keep it real, that's key. We the best OGs. Dope topics, come see. D-Y-S-G. Keep it real, that's key. We the best OGs. Dope topics, come see. I got a question, do you speak geek? Yeah. New episodes on the podcast dropping each uh -huh. week. Get hip to the game, I'm giving y'all a sneak yeah. peek. Flavor for your ears, bars flowing on unique beats. Sheesh. Blurs and nerds, freaks and geeks. The source wall wins, they dropping comics. You should cop, I think you don't up cheap. Yeah. Don't, don't sleep on Dono and Nicks. They preaching the gospel, real ish, ill like mono, they sick. Right. Thumb life if you're into games with combos and kicks. This podcast is a gift, it's as real as it gets. Yeah. Blurs taking over, we're clever marketing, we gain exposure. Feeding the community magic, your boy's a nerd promoter. The dialogue is Jimmy Crack. Corn, we aiming for gold. The truth was told. I can't speak for other platforms. Uh, Sharp as cats out like knives, claws, and tack thorns. Yeah. We blacking out, going crazy like a black storm. DYSG, don't forget to follow back. Hosting on the airwaves, always keeping it a stack. Flowers to my haters, psych. I ain't giving y'all jack. Number one on the charts, give your boy a gold plaque. What's going on, people? It's your boy, Nix. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> this is going to be fire episode. So much content. This is episode 128. Do you speak geek? Ah, uh, yo, shout out to everybody. All of y'all who've been rocking with me so far, man. Y'all, the, the loyal people, the loyal listeners, the loyal subscribers, the followers, the friends, the family, all of y'all, man. I Love y'all so, so much. But if you are new here, welcome to Do You Speak Geek. This is the podcast where we bring you all the latest and greatest inside of the Geek Realm as far as news and reviews. If you are, you know, listening to podcasts, you know, wherever you may listen, Spreaker, Apple, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeart, wherever, Do You Speak Geek, subscribe, please, and follow along with your boy, do you speak geek.com, the central hub for everything DYSG. The merch is there, the blogs, 
more and more content coming soon. More, 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 more. I'm telling y'all, dspeakie.com about to be major. Stay close. Peep it. And follow us on social media. Facebook at DYSGFB. Twitter at DYSG underscore tweets. Twitch at DYSG underscore games. And Instagram, TikTok, and Quirk Chat at Do You Speak Geek. The YouTube channel, the only place where you can find the Don and Win Daddy show. Please be sure to subscribe, like, Hulk, smash that bell for all notifications, and leave comments. We want to know what you guys think. We out. We we uh, We might have some new content coming from Donovan on the solo tip. Stay close for that. Stay close. It's gonna be dope. All right, y'all, we're going to get into some reviews real quickly, and then we're going to break down the big event that went all the way up this past weekend. So let's go ahead and do what we do about this time, people. Let's speak geek. Suit up. I want to be the very best. Talk nerdy to me. All right, people, we got reviews coming at you at Rapid Fire. Saints Row uh, delivers no shortage of shallow shoot 'em up thrills, but its very familiar and uninspired brand of soapbox fun is to be desired. I mean, nothing new here, nothing big, nothing major. It's just, just Saints Row as expected. The Invitation represents everything that makes a middle of the road vampire experience, but doesn't deserve to be wholly written off. Pretty decent movie, y'all. Check that one out. Me Time has bursts of energy and vibrancy, mostly involving its two leads and their snappy chemistry. But it's also an assortment of predictable buddy comedy beats that doesn't do much to separate itself from what's to come before it. Kevin Hart, Mark Wahlberg, you guys were good, but I mean, a child could have reviewed this movie. Just saying. Samaritan. Sylvester Stallone doesn't seem to be thrilled playing a superhero in Samaritan. It hinges on predictable reveal and not much else. If that's your thing, check it out. And finally, The End is Nigh, Season 1. Bill Nye, the irascible science protagonist optimist, is back with an entertaining new series that simulates the outcome of near-future natural disasters. That was a pretty good series. Check that one out. Okay, y'all. This past weekend, we had Gamescom 2022. Packed with a lot of news and a lot of reveals, let's hit the high points. After eight long years, Dead Island 2 has finally been re-revealed with a new trailer and the news that will be released on February 3rd, 2023. The cinematic trailer started Jacob, one of the six playable characters in the game, and showed him slaughtering his way through Los Angeles with both a gun and a katana. Decent trailer, check it out. Gamescom opening night live not only confirmed that Sonic Frontiers would be speeding its way to a November 8 release date, but it also shared a new trailer that showcases Sonic running around various environments, some mysterious new characters, and even a glimpse of Amy. Our upcoming trip to Gotham City has been moved up quite a bit as opening night revealed that Gotham Knights will now be released on August, not August, sorry, October 21st. The trailer that helps share the news also confirmed Harley Quinn and Clayface will be appearing as major villains alongside Mr. Freeze, the Penguin, and the Court of Owls. Following its delay, Hogwarts Legacy received a new trailer at Gamescom opening night that features a new look of gameplay, students digging into Salazar Slytherin's past, and a slightly terrifying choice involving the tortured curse of Crucio. Mmm. I can't wait for this one. It's going to be dope. Sony has finally announced its answer to Microsoft Xbox's Elite Controller with the DualSense Edge, a premium-grade PS5 wireless controller that has customizable controls, the ability to save multiple control profiles, changeable stick caps, back buttons, and more. This is a bad mother sucker here, boy. I can't wait to get my hands on one. A new Forsaken gameplay overview trailer 
has been released and it showcases the game's combat, exploration, and Frey's magical abilities. Speaking of abilities, Forspoken will include over a hundred spells and abilities and it will even grade you on how you're doing with a Devil May Cry style combo grading system. Should be pretty good. AEW Fight Forever just may be a return to the golden age of wrestling games as it plays exactly like WWF No Mercy. While it has us very excited, it also stung us with a little rock and pebble of things that'll hold up less than well to a modern standard. The look and feel is amazing, but we will see what happens when the game is finally released. Developer Everstone Games has unveiled its new open world RPG, Where the Wind Meets, which looks to be very much like Ghost of Tsushima and Medieval China. It is set in the very beautiful Ten Kingdoms period at the end of the Southern Tang Dynasty, and the main character looks to be a mysterious swordsman who will be tasked with surviving this tumultuous time. Hmm, can't wait to see that one. And finally, we have my man Hideo Kojima. Beginning on September 8th, he will be launching his very own podcast on Spotify called Brain Structure, which will be a deep dive into his brain and shed light on his creative process. Episodes will be released each Thursday, and the show will be available in both Japanese and English. That should be pretty interesting. So those are your news and reviews. I hope everyone enjoyed Gamescom. Favorite piece of news from Gamescom for myself? Very, very excited about that uh, early release of Gotham Knights, and I can't wait to get my hands on a DualSense Edge. That controller is sexy. I cannot wait. Let's hop into my favorite portion of the show. Y'all know the vibes. Source Wall. Man, you come right out of a comic book. Behold the Source Wall. Can you read, my son? Well, that depends. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with reading a story and looking at the pictures. Enough said, Stan. Let's hop right into it. The pull list this week, we have Amazing Fantasy 1000. Yes, the comic book that brought you Spider-Man hits issue 1000. We're going big to celebrate this 1000th issue of Amazing, Spider Fan Amazing, Amazing Fantasy. An all-star roster of creators are coming together to celebrate Peter Parker and Spider-Man's birthdays. Should be a good one. Thunderbolts, number one. New York City's finest are here to save the day. Hawkeye, Spectrum, America Chavez, Power Man, Persuasion, and Gustin Glory. You know them, you love them. They're the Thunderbolts. In the aftermath of Devil's Reign, the Big Apple has big problems. And it's up to a new group of Thunderbolts to turn this thing around. But when Clint Barton gets tasked with teaming up with his, with heading up this team and proving they can go toe to toe with anything in the Marvel Universe can throw at them, their first opponent he's going to have to face is himself. That's always a bad thing, right? <laughs> Superman World War Apocalypse number one. It has all led to this: the final battle between Superman and Mongol and between the Authority and Mongols' unmade champions. The identity of the Hooded Stranger has been revealed, uncovering a shocking betrayal that threatens to crush Superman's rebellion forever. But as the fate of World World relies on Superman, the last chance to return his powers now lies with Natasha and John Henry Irons. From the visionary creative team of Philip Kennedy Johnson, Brandon Peterson, and Will Conrad, Empires fall and rise, and the fourth world is reborn in this jaw-dropping final chapter. Check that one out when I get a chance. Power Rangers Unlimited, The Death Ranger, number one. The legendary Omega Rangers defended the universe from evil thousands of years ago. The six of them using their elemental powers to protect others from sinister forces. But that all changed when one key member turned on the others, seduced by the death-defying powers of the ranger's greatest foe. How does this ranger connect to what's locked in the mysterious Omega Vault in Safe Haven so many millennia later, as everything converges in the highly anticipated Charge to 100? Cannot wait to get my hands on 
this one. This one's going to be so fire. I can't wait. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> and finally, we have Forever Forward, a sci-fi adventure like no other. One that imagines time travel through the future as an Odyssey-style mythic journey home. When brilliant young scientist Dr. Lewis Moody accidentally launches himself, his secret longtime crush, and three best friends 33 years into the future with his unproven quantum time machine, they find a mysterious message from their future selves. The only way back is forward. Now as they jump again and again through strange future times, will they one day find the technology to travel back or are they doomed to hopelessly travel forward forever? Yo, sounds pretty uh, pretty ominous. Those are my picks for this week, people. Please be sure to pick those up and more at your local comic book store. Now, in source wall news, Gotham Knights Gilded City, Gilded City sets the stage for the video game. Like the Arkham series before it, Gotham Knights is a game that draws from many corners of the Batman franchise to create its own cohesive universe. This is a game that shines a spotlight on the Dark Knight's former sidekicks and the shadowy Court of Owls. But the game isn't simply borrowing from the existence of the Batman mythology, it's also making some key additions of its own, and one of those additions is the focal point of Gotham Knights prequel comic book, Gilded City. Written by Evan Narcisse, Batman Gotham Knights Gilded City is a story that takes place both in the immediate lead up to the game and in Gotham City's distant past. It all hinges on a new DC hero, a 19th century freedom fighter known as the Runaway. Gilded City is a direct prequel to the game, one set before Batman and Gordon's deaths. Narcisse is familiar with the plot of the game, having worked as a narrative consultant for Gotham Knights and other superhero games like Marvel's Spider-Man and Marvel's Avengers. But his goal here is ultimately to tell a story that stands on its own two legs. Narcisse stresses to IGN that the comic is linked more thematically than causally to the game. Gilded City is less about filling in major story gaps than helping to establish this version of Gotham City and the relationships between Batman and his sidekicks. So that should be pretty good. I wonder about this uh, Freedom Fire name, Runaway. I've seen the pictures of it, and it kind of looks like a Robin almost. But we'll see what happens here. We may even see how Batman and Gordon died prior to this game. Hopefully. All right, people. Let's watch this. Watch this, y'all. Thunder. 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 <laughs> Lannister always pays his debts. Whoa, dude. I am the villain of the story. All right, people. Shazam, Fury of the Gods, and Aquaman, the Lost Kingdom, both delayed. Warner Brothers Discovery. I feel so... so I've, I'm so sick of talking about them. Oh, my God. Has pushed back the release dates of its two big DC releases. Instead, now, Warner Bros. has announced that Shazam sequel will now be released on March 17th instead of December 21st. Sorry, let's rewind that. March 17th, 2023, instead of this year, December 2021. And Aquaman 2 has now been pushed back to the previous March to now December 25th, 2023. Okay, both movies are being pushed back hella, hella long. Again, no reason has been given for the delay, and movies like Black Adam and The Flash appear to have kept their original release dates. So, at least not everything's getting touched in the house of DC. But man, they better get their shit together, because people are getting upset about this stuff. Like, really upset. Anyways, moving on. The Umbrella Academy renewed for a fourth and final season. So, news of the renewal came by way of an announcement on Twitter where it was also revealed the Umbrella Academy showrunner Stephen Blackman has extended his creative partnership with Netflix. He will be taking on multiple other projects alongside the fourth season of the Umbrella Academy, which will see the entire Hargreaves family return for their series final outing. I mean, this past season was okay. I still haven't finished it myself, but <laughs> a lot of people were saying how this past season, the third season was kind of, yeah, whatever. So... It makes sense that way they would do one final season to kind of wrap things up. Okay. But speaking of cancellations, 
Netflix has canceled Resident Evil after just one season. So, Deadline reports that Netflix has opted not to order a second season of Resident Evil, its action horror series loosely based on the popular video game franchise. The news, which comes a month and a half after the series' July 14th release, is not entirely surprising as the drama did not have a particularly strong showing on Netflix's top 10, and cost versus viewing is the streamer's leading renewal criteria. People drag this series. I am not surprised at all it's getting canceled. We all kind of saw this coming. And finally, whew, Jeffrey Dean Morgan will now be joining the cast of The Boys in season four. Now, according to Variety, the 56-year-old 56 act, 56 actor has joined season four of Amazon's superhero show in an undisclosed role as a recurring guest star. Morgan has been a fan of The Boys for some time, expressing a firm interest in joining the show after interacting with showrunner Eric Kirkby on Twitter. Whatever happens, it's unclear how Jeffrey Dean Morgan will fit into it. But given his superhero pedigree with the likes of Jack Snyder's Watchmen, it might be neat to see Morgan as another washed-up superhero like the comedian. Yo, can he just be Negan <laughs> in this show? Or, you know, can he just be, like, can he be the comedian? Like, can we, can we have, like, a... Like a, a a crossover, if you will, you know, could that be dope? I mean, of course, it'll be his own character, and I have no idea who he's gonna be yet. But yo, Jeffrey Dean Morgan in the boys, this shit's gonna go up, dog. I cannot wait. He's going to kill it. Whew, love this show. All right, y'all, let's hop into some life, peace, love, and video games. That's all like Donkey Kong. That man is playing Galaga. All right, gamers, new Dark Souls game has been announced. Seam Forward Games has announced two new standalone core sets for Dark Souls, the board game. So, Tomb of Giants and Dark Souls, the board game Painted Worlds of Armis are a pair of new core sets for its line of Dark Souls board games. Board games would feature a revised rule set of the original Dark Souls, the board game rules, featuring a new event system, a new objective card deck, streamlined campaign rules, and more puzzle-based gameplays. Both games can be played on their own or integrated with any Dark Souls board game set. So, new ones coming soon. Check those out. No release date as of yet. PS5 is now going to get a price increase. Yes, it's kind of ugly. But for those who are in the States right now, don't worry. It's unaffected by people in the States. However, more specifically, the price update is going to come to Europe, the UK, China, Australia, Mexico, and Canada, and also China. So Europe, we're going to see the PS5 Ultra HD Blu-ray Blu disc drive go to $549.99 and the digital edition go to $449.99. UK, the Ultra HD disc drive is going to $479 with the digital going to $389. Japan, effective on September 15th, going to 60,478 yen. And the digital edition going to 49,478 yen. China. China. <laughs> the di disc version is going to 4,299 4, yuan. And the digital edition is going to 3,499 yuan. And in Australia, the disc version is going to 799, while the digital is going to 649. Oh, man. They got to make that money back somehow because with the lack of being able to sell this thing, even though it's the highest selling system, still, there are several people out there who do not have one. Go figure. Speaking of Sony, they are now going to form a studio mobile division to create games based on new and existing IPs. This is our last bit of news for the pod today. 
Sony has announced a committed expansion into mobile gaming by establishing the PlayStation Studios mobile division and acquiring the untested Savage Game Studio to develop a AAA mobile live service action game. The new development will innovate an on-the-go experience based on new and existing PlayStation IPs that meet PlayStation Studios' high-quality standards and will operate independently from console game development. This acquisition reaffirms Sony Interactive Entertainment's commitment to delivering innovative experiences to new players around the world by expanding to additional platforms. This was said by the head of PlayStation Studios, Herm Pulse. Sony announced back in May that releasing games on new platforms was now a key part of its business strategy, but this was largely thought to be a reference to its recent expansion into PC gaming rather than a mobile push. So, we're going to get some more mobile games, but more Sony focus. I would love to play a mobile Uncharted, maybe even a uh, mobile Spider-Man, a mobile God of War. I'm with that. I don't know about y'all, but yeah. Definitely gonna need a bigger phone though. Definitely gonna need a bigger phone with some more gigs. Yeah, definitely gonna need that. But, anyways, people, that has been the pod. I hope you all have enjoyed yourself and had a good time with me. A lot of good news, but for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and hop out of here. Thank you all for listening. Please, please be sure to listen to this podcast, subscribe to this podcast. Let your boy know what you think about this podcast. Visit the website, doyouspeakgeek.com. Follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitch. Check us out on YouTube. Like and subscribe to the videos there. As always, people, live to play, play to win, win to live. I speak geek. Do you speak geek?